Hey everybody, this is Joe from the F-Stops here. So I've been talking about Capture One for a little bit on this channel, uh, doing some videos on using it, uh, quick tips, uh, getting into some longer discussions, some live edits, uh, because it's a software I dearly love and I want people to be really comfortable using it. Um, the video that you're seeing up there is a video that I will never release. Uh, I shot it, I edited it, it was scheduled to premiere, and now I have to completely scrap it because it was a video on features I wanted to see in the next iteration of Capture One, which we're due for in not too long. I have to readdress this because of something that happened this past weekend. Uh, Adobe had an event, uh, as you uh, very well might know, uh, where they released a substantive update to Lightroom. The update's primary features are uh, enhanced masking tools. So basically the ability to mask certain areas very, very easily. Uh, a year ago, they released the Select Subject and Select Sky masking tools, which immediately made their masking capacity easier and faster than Capture One's. This is a refinement of those tools, and it's incredible. Uh, it is, uh, and I'm gonna show it to you in a little bit, uh, the capacity to select parts of subjects that we would regularly do quite easily. And uh, it is so substantive and it's so good that it really warrants a reaction from Capture One users uh, like myself. I've been using the software for about eight years as my primary editor. And there are many things I love about it that I've discussed on this channel. I love the uh, ability to completely customize your workspace. I love the depth of editing that you can do. I love the color control tools. I love the organizational process of it. But for the last year, masking has just been flat out easier in Lightroom. And now that has widened into a gulf. So in a minute, I'm going to show you the masking differences between Lightroom after this update and Capture One so that you see what I'm on about if you haven't seen it. But the reaction, the end of the page is this. This is an incredible uh, benefit to the speed and ease of your workflow if you are a Lightroom user. It's, it's miles better than the masking that we can do, particularly with people, in Capture One. And while I still believe that once you have masked an area inside of Capture One, the depth of the edits you can do is deeper in that masked area with more capacity than you can in Lightroom, you have to mask the area first. And that is way easier to do in Lightroom now. And this is now kind of a desperate cry, I think, for Capture One users, because it is going to be very difficult for Capture One to maintain and to get new customers if the ease of use for masking areas maintains this separation in difficulty levels. Uh, it's, it's that, it's that important, I feel. Um, I'm, su I'm super impressed by this update from Adobe. I'm thrilled for all of my friends who use Lightroom. Uh, this is a great feature. Have fun using it. It's awesome. Um, I really am excited to see if Capture One can address this AI difference because it is of, I think now, supreme importance uh, for the software. So without further ado, let's jump into it and let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Uh, when you go into Lightroom now, and this, this is the update from this past weekend, um, we now can go to the masking tool over here. And what's changed is it immediately recognizes the people. If you have multiple people, then you can just hover over the individual that you want to select, which is pretty incredible just right there. Once I click on a person, it now asks, what kind of a mask do you want? There's the entire person, but I don't have to do that. I can do just the face skin. So if you are trying to do a, an alteration on 
the skin tone of a person, it's super, super easy because we would, of course, not want the eyebrows, the eyes, or the lips, or the teeth to be part of this. Those are now automatically removed, as you can see. I can do body skin, which sometimes the, uh, the skin tone of body skin is different than your face because your face receives more sunlight. Uh, we can do just the eyebrows. We can do the eye sclera, which is, this is incredible. We can come in here and this is just the whites of the eyes, right? So if you saw those and they had a little bit of a bloodshot uh, tint to them, you can now reduce that, okay? We can of course do, if you can do sclera, then you can do um, lips, teeth, iris, and pupil, as you're seeing here. Um, and here's the real kicker, hair. So when we do this, we now have a really nice masking of the hair of the subject. Now there's a little bit inside of here that if you want it to be very finicky, you could of course come in, subtract all this area here, um, which is amazing. Uh, this level of detail is just incredible. Uh, what would we have to do inside of Capture One to achieve this? So here's the exact same image in Capture One. Um, well, let's say that I wanted, just as demonstration, let's say I wanted the iris and the pupil, okay? Well, I could of course do that, all right? What would it take? Well, come in here and now I'm going to create a new mask. If I come in here and I would have to do this with a brush. And now, of course, I need to adjust the size of the brush so that it's about the size of where I'm masking. I want the flow to be reasonable. And then I would have to rely on the object aware filter, which by the way, the object aware filter is quite good uh, in order to mask the eye. And what if I wanted the whites of the eye? What if I wanted the sclera? Well, what would I do in that case? I'd have to mask the entire eye and then erase out the pupil. So I can do this same work, of course, but it is obviously more work. Now, what about if I wanted the just the skin? This is the real trick. If I wanted just the skin, I would mask the face and then go in with an eraser and erase the teeth, the lips, the eyes, and the hair. And that would obviously take quite a bit more time. So that's, that's an enormous workflow difference. The second difference uh, is going to be, if we're looking at masking, I can create a new mask and I can just select background. Now this is much simpler, right? So if I do select background with this image, it's going to do the select subject and then automatically do an inversion. And it does it great. What would I have to do inside of Capture One? Well, I'd have to do my object wear brush. I'd have to mask the subject. Then I'd have to come to create a new empty layer and then copy the mask from the previous layer and then invert it. That's quite a bit more time. So selecting the person and the parts of the person, that's not everything. We also have inside of here, selecting an object. All I've got to do is select object. I'm going to come in and just click on an object. And what it's going to do is analyze the scene and start selecting parts of the object. If it doesn't get it exact, of course, just like with any mask, we can start adding to it in the exact same way. And in this way, we can start masking out parts of an image very, very effectively. As if that wasn't enough, let's take a look at yet another ability that's been added through AI. And it's inside of the healing brush here. We go into this and they've added a third healing tool option, which is now if we hover over the content aware remove, right? So we're just gonna find something we wanna remove. And I'm just gonna come in and just kind of go around it, let the software kind of analyze the object, and it removes it. This is 
amazing stuff, and there is no counterpart to this inside of Capture One. If we come to Capture One, I don't have the ability to detect an object. I don't have this ability to do a content-aware analysis of an object for removal. We have to work with the tools that we have, which is just cloning masks and healing masks, which are nice, but we don't have this level of parity with our edits. So I am super impressed by this update from Lightroom. I think it's incredible. I also think that there needs to be a response from Capture One. We need to see a big announcement in AI and what they are doing to have parity for these features. All right, thanks for joining me. Uh, if you're thinking about switching from one software to another, or if there's things you love about one software or another, uh, I'd love to hear about it. It's, it's an interesting time to be in the editing world. All right, thanks a lot. We'll see you later.